Coach Mike St. Germain is from Franklin and Marshall College. He's going to represent the Division III group, and he'll talk just quickly five minutes about you know what they're looking for when they're looking at recruit. How's everybody doing? All right. Uh, I actually grew up down the road in Morris Plains, went to Morristown High School, uh, played my college football at Lafayette. So I, I think I got a decent idea when it comes to the multiple aspects of recruiting, what we're looking for. From a Division Three level, I think everybody at every single level, is, number one thing has got to be effort. They got to love to play the game of football. And the biggest thing I think that kids don't understand going into college is the fact that you were probably the best kid on your team. Maybe you didn't have to work hard, maybe you did, but whether you like it or not, it's all going to have to start over again because you're on a new team, new people, and you're going to have to continue to work hard to try and get yourself on the field. So effort is definitely something we look for. Grades, uh, Franklin and Marshall, the top 40 liberal arts college in America, we're looking for very good grades. The other thing that I think you can help yourself out with, just as a student athlete, is you can make yourself a lot more enticing to recruit because your grades are going to help open doors that maybe, you know, possibly you may not have had an opportunity before, whereas the ability may not be there, the grades will help kind of push you into a slot. And then I think multi-sport athletes, multiple sets of different motor skills, coordination, things of that nature, that's kind of getting lost now with everybody kind of specializing, things of that nature. I think people are starting to recruit more multi-sport guys because you're starting to see less and less of them. So I think that's important as well. Just want to talk a little bit about the Division One there and how things work. That is, you know, mostly a scholarship level. Right now, Division One football is split into two categories. There's the FBS category and the FCS category, and that gets confusing. But that's how the NCAA terms it. Really, what takes place is the FBS is like the bowl championship uh, division. So. What most people call Division One A is the, the FBS uh, division of, of Division One football. That level is a school is allowed to have 85 players on scholarship, and that is as long as the school is doing the proper things with what they call the academic progress rate. And I'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. But that's a way that the NCA can look at a school and says, "Hey." They're doing the right things with their players in the classroom, so they've garnered the right to have 85 players on scholarship. In the FBS level or Division I-A level, schools are not allowed to break up those 85 scholarships. So one scholarship equals one equivalency. So there's, if there's 85 scholarships, there'll be 85 players on scholarship. Uh, the other thing that's a, a, a pertinent rule for us is you're only allowed to bring 105 guys into, into training camp uh, when, the, when a school year starts in August. So you could have 80, really basically 85 scholarship players on campus and you could have another 20 walk-ons on campus. Now those walk-ons, they, uh, they can, through the financial aid office of the school or financial aid that's, that's given to any other regular student, they can garner whatever financial aid that they're rewarded. But, uh, the football aspect is really, it's not involved in that because that would be considered an extra benefit. The FCS or the championship series, that's what most people call Division One Double A. They're the, the teams that play in the playoffs. So that's like a Maine, a New Hampshire, a Delaware, a Richmond, James Madison. They are allowed to have 63 scholarships at that level. The difference there being is they can actually break those scholarships up. So you could have one guy splitting one, or two guys splitting one scholarship. So you can give a half scholarship or a quarter scholarship, or you could pay for books. They can break those up whatever, whatever way they want. So they're, they have 63 scholarships to work with. And then now however they break that up is, is, the, is up to the coaching staff and, and the university on how they want to do that. But that's the big difference. Uh, at, the, at the Division I level, you're not a, if there's 85 scholarships that can't be broken up, so it's a full scholarship. At the Division I AA level, it's, you can kind of break those up. Now, some conferences don't actually use all, they, they have a rule that says, hey, we're only going to have 50 scholarships in our conference. Or, but uh, a lot of the top level uh, conferences that play for the national championship or in the playoffs year in and year out will use all 63 scholarships. It, it's kind of a, a conference rule, but that's what that's the level that they're allowed up to at the FCS series is 
63 scholarships. I talked a little bit about the academic progress rate. At Division I, it is, it is more about scholarships, but the most important thing that, that uh, most coaches, including myself, would look for, the first thing we look at when we go into a school is, is the transcript. Uh, I like to uh, kind of use the analogy with recruiting that you're driving down a highway. The, best, the fastest way to get somewhere a lot of times is to get on the highway and go from point A to point B. If the transcript isn't right, sometimes you got to take the back roads, whether it's through a prep school or a junior college. And, and, you know, if you get on some of those back roads, you might get pulled over somewhere when you're trying to get the destination from point A to point B. So the most important thing we try to stress is make sure you're doing the job in the classroom. And the NCA had, for us at the Division I level, you have to be what they call a qualifier. And what a qualifier is, right now in Division I, you have to have 16 core courses. And that's really, a, that there's a series of those are math, English, there's science, social science, and there's different electives that, that equal up those 16 core courses. And your grade point average in those core courses has to be equivalent to a score that you make on the ACT or the SAT. They, we call that a sliding scale. So the better you do on one of the standardized tests, the SAT or the ACT, the lower your GPA in your core courses in those 16 core courses can be. But really, in order for us to kind of keep our guys on the highway, it's important at the Division One level that you recruit guys with, with the academic uh, you know, prowess to do well is because ultimately if your APR isn't where it needs to be your academic progress rate, you won't have that full allotment of 85 scholarships. The NCAA will come in and say, all right, you're not doing the job in the classroom, so you only have 80 scholarships. And, you know, as competitive as it is, it's very, very competitive. It's, it's the highest level, level of football next to the National Football League. Those, you know, two or three scholarships can, can make the difference in, in uh, you know, in, in, in a winning season or a losing season or, or you know, a championship season or that type of thing. So it's very important that, that you understand where you are in the classroom. You have to sign up with the NCAA Clearinghouse. That can be done through your guidance counselor. It also can be done online. I recommend doing that in, you know, uh, in, in a timely fashion. So that way you can start the process of making sure you are an NCAA qualifier. Uh, talk to your guidance counselor about what four courses you need to, to make. I mean, sometimes it's a shame you, a guy will get to his senior year and you need four Englishes, for example. And uh, he's getting ready to graduate, but only three of his English classes count as core courses. So it's very important that you're on the same page with your, your high school coach and your guidance counselor in terms of making, making sure that you're in the proper curriculum to be an NCAA qualifier at the appropriate time. But as a, as a, as a big, kind of a follow-up, the Division I-A level, we have 85 scholarships. The Division I-AA level could be up to 63 scholarships. Division I cannot split those scholarships in any way, shape, or form. The Division I AA, they can break up that, those scholarships however they want. And it's very, very important to make sure that you're on track to being an NCAA qualifier. Thank you very much.